The end is nigh. Just four more rounds left in the 2020 J1 League and the battle for Champions League places is still up in the air. So much at stake and so little separating the contenders. We have it all for you on the J1 League Goal Zone. Rescheduled from round 26, Vergalta took on Kashiwa at home and were still searching for that elusive home win. They wouldn't find it again this time as Alunga scored his 26th goal of the season to seal a 2-0 win for the visitors. The Miyagi-based team have just one more game remaining at the Eurotek Stadium to notch a win in front of their home fans. Back to regular programming now, Cereza were due north to try for another three points against Sapporo. Kashi were back in action shortly after their win, they took on Nagoya, with both teams still in Champions League contention, and Gamba travelled to Shonan for their fixture. Sitting in fifth and just one point away from the final ACL berth, Cerezo travelled to the Sapporo Dome on the back of two wins, looking to bank in more points. Consadole hadn't lost in three and would like to cap off their last home game of the season with another win for the fans. Here's Shazad Hack. Now Komai. Right start here from the home side. Jay Bothroyd and needed the intervention of Jin Hyun just to make sure that could have crept in. Well, Bothroyd aiming for 50 goals if he can. 50 goals in the J League. That might have taken a, a bit of a deflection as well. Getting in between the defenders there, Sakamoto. He's another very good player that's just not got involved yet. That's a great ball in, isn't it, from Kiyotake. Oh, it's a good ball in. Bruno Mendes' header, straight to the keeper, though. Bothroyd, Anderson. Oh, he calls that just wide of the post. I think the keeper probably would have had that covered. This will give us a better idea. Maybe not. Riku Matsuda. That's another header. And this time he makes no mistake. At the third time of asking, Bruno Mendes gets the goal. Really good work from Riku Matsuda. And Bruno Mendes makes no mistake this time. His eighth goal of the season. Fukumori could have been better in the tackle. Picked him up really well, didn't he, Mendes? No one around the Brazilian. Completely free header, and he's placed it brilliantly. He wasn't able to get it either side of the keeper earlier. He does so this time. Trying to curl that to the far post. Kaneko. Well, they've had the line share of the ball, and the earlier chances. And put them away. Mendes. Oh, another good ball! Oh, what a great finish that is! Kiyotake, the flag stays down, it's a goal. It's a beautiful ball over the top, but again, this man here, Kiyotake, such a great natural footballer. The Latina will be really happy with that. Well, he found again a pocket of space. Just killed it dead with his right foot. It smashed it in with his left. He's so good with both feet. That is also a great ball in. Got to give plenty of credit to that as well. Oh, nice turn of pace here. Mendes almost creeps in. Strong hand by the keeper. Sugeno. They are threatening, aren't they? The third. Oh, great chance here! He's not going to miss that! Jay Bothroyd on the six-yard box. It was a perfect cross. He acknowledges that immediately. And they're back in this. Consadoli, just after a very poor challenge from him. His sixth goal of the season. Swung over to the other side to Lucas. Cheeky cross, wasn't it? On the volley in between the two defenders. Still gets your goals, Jay Bothroyd. Yeah, second ball. Oh, it's too easy here. Toyokawa. Oh, it's an easy finish. Bruno Mendes with the simplest of tap ins. 
What was going on there? You can hear Jay Bothroyd, Fukubori, completely on the wrong end side of Toyokawa with the assist here. Just as they were looking threatening again, Sapporo. It was a poor defending by Fukubori. I'm afraid he's had a role in two of the three goals today, but not in a positive way. Parked precariously in third, Nagoya faced Kashiwa at home, looking for their third win in four matches. The visitors had kept the most clean sheets in the league and will be put to the test against the free-scoring Alunga. Free-scoring he may be, but this first chance in the 16th minute was brushed just wide of the post. Nagoya then produced a long-range dipping effort from Mateus, parried away by the goalkeeper. And minutes later, with them all lining up on the edge of the six-yard box, this free kick missed everyone. Reacting to the corner 12 minutes before half-time, Gabriel Xavier took this one down on his knee and half-volleyed just wide. Nagoya certainly fancied themselves from distance. Mateus again, this time into the arms of Kim seung gyu into the second half now, Kim unable to gather Sho Inigaki's cross. Yuki Soma takes a touch and slots that one home. Kashiwa then looking for the equaliser. Kengo Kitazume's cross, Olunga's flick, not strong enough. And they went searching for Olunga again with three minutes left, but they couldn't get the decisive touch. A 15th clean sheet of the season for Nagoya, and they take this one 1-0. Kawasaki were in Shizuoka for their first match as champions to face an opponent from the other end of the table, despite there being nothing left of value to play for either side. Frontale would want to keep their momentum alive ahead of their Emperor's Cup fixture scheduled at the end of the year. Here's Mark Richmond. by El Senior, the two number 18s clash. Mitoma is, uh, had the beating of him and dragged the ball inside to Leandro. Well, goalkeeper had to improvise and use his leg. Here's Carlinhos, runner on the outside. It's Nishimura. Nishizawa, I should say, and that's the opening goal. Carlinhos uh, picking it up at the far post. Uh, after a mix-up in defense, and Shimitsu Espols have taken the lead against the champions. His 10th of the season, Carlinhos. Uh, and it all stemmed from that giveaway by Jessiel, too cheap. And Carlinho started the move by playing it out wide to Nishizawa. Always looking for that early cross inside and Goto managing to just flick it on. And that touch was all important in the end. It looked as if it was a deflection, but it was Goto who flicks that ball through into the path. Takeuchi, in fact, and not Goto, flicked the ball through into the path of... Uh, Carlinhos and Sungryong will be quite disappointed that he's beaten at the near post. Tanaka, Mitoma breaking clear, Hitate behind him, uses Morita, lovely ball inside, here is Tanaka, oh, what a move, what a move from Kawasaki Frontale, and our Tanaka, who was very central in that full move, has notched the equaliser, there he is, that ball inside, the return of the pass, brilliant from Leandro Damiao. So sweet, so simple. A Saturday stroll into Shimizu goal. That is a superb goal from Kawasaki Frontale, and that is their 80th, you heard me right, 80th goal of the season. Nishizawa knows that El Senior is always on the outside, making the pitch as wide as possible. That's a brilliant ball that's played inside this time. Jesse L controls it and saved on the line. <laughs> After a mix-up in defense, well, Jesse Alt turned hero this time because he cut out to Kaneko, who almost walked through into goal. A little sleepy in defense, and it came off Hatate. Hatate. Morita flicking it into space uh, to match the run of Yamane just slightly behind Leandro but it's broken clear oh 
good save you'd have to say from the goalkeeper and Tanaka a man that has a new goal scoring streak in him and almost found his second well, Leandro couldn't get anywhere close to the ball but it broke the loose ball to Tanaka and that's the confidence of a player who has been scoring here is Jesse o. another poor pass by the Brazilian center back and a chance now for the second goal well Jesse o makes up for it by covering in the end after Sungryong palmed it away but it's twice already the Brazilians given the ball away cheaply and another loose pass freeing up Goto Nishizawa top assister this year for Shimizu Kanato Gusto it's in it's in it surely is in and Shimizu S Pauls have gone ahead again two Brazilians two goals and Hiraoka is celebrating Yet again, Kawasaki Frontale failed to clear their line somewhat. This free kick taken in, it looked very harmless. But the ball was allowed to bounce all over. This time, Jung Sung Ryong couldn't reach out to it, even with his legs. And that scramble on the goal line was too little, too late by Yamane. Give credit to Renato Augusto, who made space and made the angle for the shot to drill it right through. Just needed to find the room instead of taking a spank into the back, which might hit some bodies. He opened up the angle for the shot and against the run of play Shimizu F's pulse have gone ahead again five minutes before the break the architect once again Nishizawa We've seen little from him as an attacking threat but two crosses have led to two goals and this third cross has found a head at the far post of which uh, Sung Ryong got a last touch and it's going to be a corner for Shimizu S pulse Valdo it was almost making it a triple Brazilian delight for Shimizu S. Pulse. Kaneko working the one too well enough. Kaneko's done well. Kaneko trying to open up the angle and find some room for the strike. It does come in and Sungryon had to react very quickly from that turn and shot from Yosuke Koto. It was a good save at the end by the goalkeeper. There we go. Instinctive by Goto. Takeuchi trying to just uh, hold it up down the flanks could have gone down for a free kick from Tanaka's challenge Goto will take this one first time and came off and rocketed off the crossbar it's Nishizawa the youngster from Shimizu Espals who actually took that shot at the end his technique was absolutely spot on textbook and that was a bullet and almost pierced through the heart of Kawasaki Frontale Yamane Nakamura is asking for it. Yet again, very tight, very disciplined defending. Ensuring the ball had to go back. A lovely pass inside by Tanaka. Oh, oh came off the upright. And Saito hits the side netting. Unbelievable. Well, it came at him double quick time, of course, uh, Kobayashi. Yet again, another breathtaking move by Kawasaki Frontale to free up Yamane, who did brilliantly well to stay onside. And that is a peach of a cross, just slightly behind Kobayashi, who went early. That's that should have been the equalizer. Denied by the crossbar, and Saito couldn't find an angle for the finish. Should have done better, you'd have to say, Manabu Saito. Oh, almost the perfect ball inside to Mitoma, rescued by Saito, who's asked for the ball to be played centrally again, but they've gone out wide to Yamane. Here is Saito. Yamane's gone, bursting inside the penalty box. Nakamura just outside. He uses Kengo Nakamura. Manabu Saito rolled it into space for Hatate, finding a way to walk through this defense. A lovely ball by Mitoma! Right back in it. And it's the right fullback who's done it, Miki Yamane. But how about that pass? How about that dish off by Kaoru Mitoma? The awareness in the world to actually touch this one all just like that. So cute, so subtle. Brilliant goal once again by Kawasaki Frontale. It was coming and it has arrived at the very last minute. This, the exact scoreline between these two sides in their second meeting of 2019. Kaoru Mitoma sprinting away. Saito, the ball's played just into his path. He's rolled it past the goalkeeper. But El Senio prevents his former club from taking the lead. Just not enough juice behind that little poke through the legs of Okubo from Saito.
That's half time on the J1 League Goal Zone Show. More highlights and goals to come when we return. No other show brings you all of the best from Japan's top flight. This is the J1 League Goal Zone Show. The Marinos took to the pitch for their rearranged game with the Antlers and wasted no time bossing the contest. Koike, oh, it set that one up beautifully. Opening goal, Kota Mitsunuma. Just his second for Yokohama Marinos. And in a flash, they just came forward and burst right through. Kashima Antlers here, space opening up for Eric. Junior Santos asked for the ball to be played square. It is to the Brazilian who tried to roll it right through and Eric's found the loose ball and Eric scored. 2-0, yet again, just like the first goal, in a flash, they just come right at you and it's blue all over the park, all of a sudden, in the land of white. After losing out to Nagoya by the same scoreline a few short days earlier, Kashima were determined to make amends and boy, did they right the ship. Shoma Doi, that's a lovely ball played inside, oh what a take that one was, what a goal, absolutely brilliant, Ayase Ueda, this boy is special. His first real involvement, Shoma Doi. We said that he needed to get a lot more involved in this game. Well, finally, he's decided to come alive, and he's found quite a superb ball all the way to Ueda. Still had a lot to do, and that finish was as explosive. Misao. Not the best of passes, not the best of touches from Matsubara. Has gifted it to Everaldo! Spitfire! All venom, all placement. All Brazilian quality, right back in the game. You can't say that it's undeserved. It was a mistake from Matsubara, but Everaldo still had a lot to do from almost 30 yards out. And he just screamed it in. That would have scared your children. What a strike that one was. Not content with just a point, the Antlers took this game by the horns. And just when you thought things couldn't get much worse, Yasushi Endo completed the misery for Ange Postacoglu's team. Show Ito, given room to pick across, and he finds a lovely one to end. Oh! What a way to open your accounts this season. Yasushi Endo, on his 375th J League appearance, scores one of his special goals. It's three brilliant goals from Kashima Antlers and they've come back from that two-goal deficit to lead this one by three goals to two with just six minutes remaining. A brilliant comeback and an important three points for the Antlers as they continue their push towards the top three. Yokohama failed to win their last two matches and have struggled to find the net. Sagan arrived after they pulled out a draw against Gamba in the previous round but both teams were in need of more firepower in front of goal to secure the points. Still in the early moments, Tomoya Koyamatsu's cross finds Fuchi Honda, but Yuta Higuchi places that one wide of the target. A minute before half-time, Kazunori Ichimi finds plenty of space in the box. He's closed down quickly, and in the end, his effort saved by Park il -Gyu. And in time added on for stoppages in the first half, great work on the left by Koki Saito, finds Takuya Matsura, and that's 1-0 to Yokohama. Two minutes into the second half, lovely touch from Kosuke Saito, playing in his namesake Koki, who slots it over the bar. But how Yokohama didn't make it 2-0 in the 54th minute, nobody is quite sure. Just before the hour mark, Daichi Hayashi breaks into the channel, forcing a firm hand from Yuji Rukutan. But they did get their equaliser in the 86th minute. Good cross coming over from Riki Harakawa. Renzo Lopez heads highest, but the goalkeeper perhaps should have done better. In the second minute of additional time, Harakawa's dead wall finds Eduardo. What a save from Rokutan. And there was still time for one more. Rokutan strong again. This one finishes. 1-1. One, one. 
bottom place Sendai may not have found a win at home yet, but they have had better showings on the road, winning their previous two away fixtures. They travel to play Oita with only two games remaining on their calendar. Not great football from either side here in the first minute. It's Takayoshi Ishihara who gets the finishing touch and Vigolta take an early lead. Nine minutes before the break, Tomoki Iwata sends in a cross. Jakub Slowik gets a fist to it, but only as far as his own defender and that's out for a corner. Here's the very latest in defensive and offensive wall formations. Yoshiki Matsushita sending his free kick over the bar. 50 minutes in, good cross from Hiroto Yamada finds Shun Nagasawa who rises high but can't quite get his header on target. Yamada in a giving mood two minutes later but Koji Hachisuka brushes his shot wide. Having had enough of passing the ball, Yamada had an effort on goal himself, turned away though by Shun Takagi. But having set his sights, Yamada was on target, heading home the corner for a 2-0 lead. Some comical defending in the 87th minute, and that requires Takagi to make a save that might have hurt him a little bit. 2-0 it finishes. Fellow league strugglers Shonan had been winless in three and would face a difficult task of containing a visiting Gamba who travelled well all season, having won more games on the road than when playing at home. In the sixth minute, how about this 45-yard effort for starters from Gen Shoji, gathered well by the goalkeeper. But having saved that effort, Masaki Goto played in his defenders who lost possession and then after a sweet interchange, Yuya Fukuda struck from the edge of the box to make it 1-0. Gamba seemed really in the groove in terms of letting fly from distance, this effort by Kazuma Watanabe. But with 10 minutes left of the half, Shonan would press for their equaliser. Gun Shoji are judged to have handballed in the penalty area. Nakagawa smashes home for 1-1. And they would press forward to take the lead in the second half. Taiga Hata with his shot deflected off target. Watanabe would square for Shu Kurata as Gamba also looked for the points. And they would take the lead in the 66th minute. Shinya Yajima's cross for Patrick, and that's 2-1. 11 minutes left now. Yuya Fukuda's cross finds Patrick. Good save from Masaki Goto. But Gamba's winning play came at the other end of the field. A super save from Higashi Gucci right on the final whistle, denying Takuya Okamoto. Cerezo with a strong win away from home as they defeated Consadole Sapporo 3-1. Nagoya pulled out a narrow victory on the road against Kashiwa. Shimitsu were unlucky at home as Kawasaki forced a share of the points with a late goal to draw level and Sagan Tosu did the same on the road, equalizing late in the game to end things all square with Yokohama FC. Newly crowned champions Kawasaki still keeping their foot on the gas as they added another point to their tally. Gamba maintained their position in second with three points this round and Nagoya closing in on the Champions League as they occupy third and have two games remaining. Cerezo moved back into fourth and trailed Grampus by just one point with a game in hand. Urawa pushed down into the bottom half of the table and have just three rounds left to bolster their points. But otherwise, it's status quo as we move closer to the end of the season with just a handful of games remaining. We hope you enjoyed this round of football from Japan. My name's Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time for the J1 League Goal Zone Show.